It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Friday, April 29th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high-quality content that is having some bittersweet feelings right now. Last game, Russ, last game. Yeah, you always get that feeling, but, like, the hockey doesn't stop for me. I go straight through the draft, so for me, it's, like, more hockey. Well, we'll talk about the last game and more coming up on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello once again, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here with Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. You can follow us on Twitter at Locked On Flyers. You'll keep up to date on all of our episodes and Flyers news. You can also email us at LockedOnFlyers at gmail.com. Today, we're going to talk about all of our feelings going into game 82 of the season, talk about the matchup against the Sens. Then we are going to talk about Flyers Awards predictions. We'll have them at this game tonight and always fun to see who gets them. And then we will talk a little bit about some fake awards that we're making up on the spot because this season needs it. And we'll wrap up with Gritty as we do every Friday. Locked on Flyers is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you are listening right now. So subscribe and you will get all of our episodes here on the Locked on Podcast Network. So we have the joy of facing the Ottawa Senators for the last game of the season. They are also playing their last game of the season tonight, but it's the back half of a back to back that is like cruel i think to have to play a back to back to end your season it is and in another country it's true it's true yeah they uh they played the florida panthers last night so as a recording we don't know the results of that game but they're probably going to be a little tired from travel Oh, yeah. Uh, as well as a game against a very fast team like that. Uh, but before that game, Ottawa won four in a row in pretty dramatic fashion. Only one of the games was a regulation win. They won in OT versus the Devils. There was a shootout against Columbus and the Canucks. So I, I think both teams, in the theory, will want to end their seasons strong and put some effort into it. Yeah, no question. I mean, the Flyers should want to defend home ice. And there's no doubt that Ottawa, a win would look good because then they can say they, they finished the season strong. Um, they do have a budding superstar in Tim Stutzla who is going to be yes. hell to cover. And then you have Brady Kachuk, who is no slouch himself either. So the top six, very hard to cover on Ottawa. Like it really – now defensively, they're a little challenged without Shabbat. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, and that is a shame, I think, for him and for the Senators that he wasn't able to finish out the season there. But again, honestly, like both teams are out of the playoffs. This is like ultimately their playoff game, right, yeah. <laughs> for them. So yeah. um, hopefully we get a playoff-like atmosphere in this one just for fun. And the fact that I think, you know, the Flyers in Ottawa obviously have a very rich playoff matchup history between them and have significant games. Of course, there was the game where everybody was in the penalty box, it yep. seemed like. I missed that one. I did. I was covering another game. Yeah, it was a lot. That was uh, quite the memorable game and, you know, most penalty minutes <laughs> in a game. And uh, I think that. I, of course, I don't want to see that. I would not like a huge melee to break out in this game. But again, just want to see this team maybe cut loose a little bit, have some fun, get creative out there. It's their last shot at it for several months. And uh, that that's my hope, wish, and dream for tonight. Win it for Mike Yo. Well, I don't know if anybody's going to say that. <laughs> but technically, it will be. Yeah, I just think you're right. Leave it out on the ice. Show us what you got. This is what the fans are going to think about you going into next year. This is the last the, the last memory. Mm -hmm. it so is. You, you should make it good. 
you should. And I don't know if win it for Mike Yo is the rallying cry for that may have been too far. Yeah. But yeah, I am curious though what's going to happen post game, and you know how quickly things might. I don't think it's going to be over. quick. I don't think it's going to be quick because I don't think Rick Tockett's going to leave his TV job immediately. If let's say he were to take the Flyers' job, so that'll take a little while. So unless they're getting a, a coach that's completely unemployed, like John Tortorella, but he's still he has an ESPN gig too, right? So. Right. I'm yeah. not saying they would necessarily hire somebody right away. I'm just wondering how quickly some turnover will start to happen in terms of people uh, exiting the organization. Yeah, not till Monday. Yeah, I think so as well. But I also feel like as the Flyers community, we deserve all the kudos in the world. We deserve a pat on the back because we made it through this season. Uh, a lot of trauma. Uh, I would say, you know, the biggest, obviously, moment of of the season was the Claude Giroux trade. I think that was a difficult spot in the weeks Mm -hmm. leading up to it. And we got through that. And I I just think that for those of us that have made it through the full season, uh, we deserve an extra prize. Yep, we made it. We fought the good fight. We've covered it. It's all we could do. That is all we can do. And I don't know. I think I just am wondering what the mood is going to be in the building. Like who shows up to this game? What is the mood? What are the emotions? Are they giving away cars? If they're giving away cars, (laughs) the emotions will be high. If they're giving away like iPads, it's going to be tempered. Yeah. I don't know how how that's going to pan out. For the fan experience, if people will want to express their feelings about the entirety of the season. You know, the shirt off their back thing, they're going to do that, you know. Yeah, they'll do all of that with the fan appreciation and and all of that. And the fans do deserve some extra appreciation. They do. (laughs) Tonight. Give them the shirts, give them your mm -hmm. socks. Like the Flyers should give them everything but the skates and sticks, honestly. (laughs) Take some extra selfies with everybody who wants them, honestly, like whatever they want, whoever shows up tonight, whatever they want, the Flyers should give it to them. I agree. hundred percent, hundred percent. And, you know, I hope that we can get some distance over this off season and really kind of dig into this team and what the plans are moving forward and utilize what we've learned. Cause I do think we have learned a lot this season about this team and what the right approach is, who works together well and who might not. And we've learned a lot about some of the new kids that we've seen over the past month or so. And I think that's my other big hope, wish and dream is that knowledge gained is knowledge used in a a really effective way. I agree, except I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I don't think any of the lines that we're seeing right now are going to be lines next year, unfortunately. Only because, you know, there's going to be so many different people involved. I can't imagine it's going to come out that way. No, and that's the thing is like sometimes with hockey teams, you can look at the lines or the roster at the end of the season and you can you know make a generally good prediction about not necessarily specific lines, but you can look at the roster and say, I know what the roster of this team is going to look like next year. I have no clue. I have no, no. clue what it's going to look like right now. I mean, I know Zach McCune will be back. Beyond that, no, I'm not probably. sure. Probably. We know Risto will be back. Obviously, he signed that deal. <laughs> and McEwen probably will get re-signed because he will. It, as a personal affront to me. <laughs> that is Fans like happen. him. Well, they do, and I get it. I totally get it. I just don't think he can contribute offensively enough to deserve that spot on the roster. And that's my, that is my opinion, and I will stick to it. That's your hill. That is the hill that I will die on for this Flyers season is yep. that I love I love Zach McEwen, the guy. I love his energy. Do not want him on the Flyers because I would want somebody who can score more goals. All right. We have uh, Flyers Awards every year. So we're going to take a look at who we think might win those in tonight's ceremony coming up next, as well as get some fake awards Uh, And who might get those as well. And we made them up. So we'll decide. Perfect. 
Summer is definitely around the corner. You're going to need some food on the go. And Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on a family vacation. You can throw them in your bags, in kegs backpacks. Make sure everyone has a bar so that you have everything you need for all your summer adventures. And the best part, they're healthy and delicious. No more sacrificing delicious food for your health. With Built Bar, you can have both. And it's so easy. All you do is go to built.com and order now. And all of their bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. You can eat healthy and enjoy doing it. And have you tried their puffs yet? They come in some crazy flavors like banana cream pie and even churro. Who doesn't want a protein bar that tastes like a churro? And they're only 140 calories. If that's not enough flavor for you, then you might want to try one of their mixed boxes. They come with 12 flavors of bars and puffs. They make sure there's something for everyone in that box. My favorite flavor, I think, is Cherry Barcia. Honestly, I think of all of them, I just keep going back to to that one. And it's only got about 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, but 17 grams of protein. A candy bar is going to have about 240 calories, a ton of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. You can get all your favorites at Built.com. They've got new flavors coming out all the time. You can use the promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. It's nightly recaps of every NHL game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So, Russ, we have the Flyers annual awards, Mm -hmm. and some of them are selected by writers, people who cover the team, such as yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of them are voted on by their teammates. We've got the fan club. So I think you'll have a a much better insight into some of them versus the other based on, you know, your conversations in the press box. But Mm -hmm. let's start with the Bobby Clark Trophy, which is the MVP award. Uh, It's voted on by sports writers and broadcasters. Last year's winner was Sean Couturier. Who is your MVP? Carter Hart. Nailed it. 100%. I agree with you on that. He has stuck it out. He's played his best. He's battled. We've all felt bad for him. Let's be honest. Yes. So, and he has been honestly, literally the most valuable player on this team all season long. And, you know, you may want to consider him for most improved, but I think like it's not good enough for him. He needs that MVP award. He does. All right, the Barry Ashby Trophy is most outstanding defenseman. Again, voted on by the media. Last year's winner was Ivan Provorov. I think we're going to have a different winner this year. Yeah, I'm going to go Travis Sanheim. Same. I think he has just proven himself this season, especially the latter half of the season. I think that you could see the improvement in his offensive game. And I think he's learned to work well with different defensive partners in a way that maybe he couldn't in previous years. And, you know, Pro-V kind of struggled a lot this year. So I think the clear winner here is Travis Sanheim. The next award is the Yannick Dupree Class Guy Award. And this is the flyer who best illustrates character, dignity, and respect both on and off the ice. Uh, It's selected by the Philly chapter of the Professional Hockey Writers Association. Last year's winner was James Van Riemsdyk. I'm going to go Cam Atkinson. Yeah, I think... I'm I'm torn on this one because I think Cam mm-hmm. Atkinson is a good selection, but I might go Keith Yandel on it. I you feel could. like they're going to want to give him an award and it's and this sounds like the right one to me. OK, I can't argue. I don't think it's a bad choice. Yeah. And especially after they ended his streak, I feel like they're going to want to give him some sort of award right. for the team as compensation in some way. Nope, that's fair. And then the Pelly Lindbergh Memorial Trophy is for most improved. That's selected by teammates. And for me, sometimes that's harder pre- to predict because you never know what the players are going to think. I'm going to still go Joel Farabee. Yeah, he won it last year. And I, I kind of feel like he could win it again. You think? I mean, with so many guys injured, with him trying to play center, I kind of do think it. It may not show up stat-wise, but... 
That's who I'm. That's who I'm saying. Yeah, I think this could be a repeat winner with Travis Sanheim. I, I just be. think that he has just taken such a leap forward this year, and it's so obvious that um, I, I think he's the guy that wins it. But uh, Joel Farabee is not a, a bad option either. I know everybody loves him in the room. Yeah. So I think. I mean, injuries that, really hurt his season. It did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here's the other award where I think that we could potentially see Keith Yandel. It is the Gene Hart Memorial Award, and it's the player with the most heart, which is selected by the fan club. I'm going to recuse myself from this. (laughs) The uh, winner last year was Sean Couturier, which I think made a lot of sense last year. And this is where I'm I'm torn, and that's why I thought the Class Guy Award might go to Keith Yandel, because I feel like there's this layer of bitterness amongst the fans about Keith Yandel, and so that the fan club might not vote for him for this. And then this is where I would put Cam Atkinson, because I think that everybody loves Cam Atkinson, and he's worked really hard this year. He's near the top of the team's list in scoring, Um He's, I think, created an optimism on the veteran side of things Mm -hmm. going into next year. I think people are really happy to have him around and think he'll be a good influence in whatever form that, you know, the team takes shape going into next year. So I I, I think this one is Cam Atkinson, but you probably know the answer to it already. And that's why you're accusing yourself. (laughs) I cannot say one way or the other. (laughs) Well, hopefully I will be right on this one because I enjoy being correct. All right. The Toyota Cup is just racking up the points in these star selections. And last year it was Claude Giroux. So obviously he will not be repeating no. in this award. And I haven't been paying attention. I haven't been I paying have, attention either. I have no idea who this is going to be. I'm going to say I, Carter Hart, but I don't maybe, know. Maybe. You know, I think in lieu of having anybody else to give a star to on the flyer side at home games, Carter Hart is always a good option. The goaltender yep. is always a good option, given anything. And, you know, maybe Carter Hart gets this one. I do think that um, as far as the awards go, there isn't really a spot here for Martin Jones And I feel like he needs to get recognized in some way because he's just been a good soldier going in when he needs to plays his best. He's like good guy, you know, tries hard. He's the in the dictionary. When you look for the nice guy tries hard meme, I would put Martin Jones uh, picture right next to that. But I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, Russ? I would just I'm not sure. Um, It's interesting. I like giving Jones something. Yeah. I do, but he's not going to get it for the stars. So what are we giving him? I don't know. That's the thing. This is where I feel like we need to start making up awards. So this is, uh, all right. So what could it be? Um, Took one for the team, Martin Jones. Ah, that is a, that is a good award. Takes one for the team and doesn't complain. Yeah. He never said boo. That is true. And, you know, it's not a particular award per se, but uh, Travis Konechny is in first place on the team as far as points go going into tonight's game. I'm guessing he'll end up there. Yeah, he's going to probably win it. So, Unless Van, I'm, no, I don't even think Van Riemsdyk's no, within I don't. Four. As far as points go, goals, yeah. it's, you know, Cam and, J, and JBR right. are tied. But yeah. points overall, I think Konechny is going to yeah. keep that top spot. Uh, Not enough points overall, I think, for a winning team, obviously, but um, certainly the most this season. All right. We are best of the worst. Yeah. (laughs) Love that. All right. We're going to talk about some more fake awards and uh, gritty thing of the week coming up next. But first, we are going to talk about our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online dot net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments. League reviews and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today 
or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, we have some more made up awards to talk about. And uh, I came up with this award because I feel like we do need to have some hope going into the end of the season and the off season. And we have so much to talk about, uh, about you know what the team is going to look like moving forward. But, you know, I feel like to wrap up this season, I want an award called the light at the end of the tunnel award. I like it. Which is an award created by me and decided by me and Russ. And it is for somebody who kind of gives us hope looking forward. And for me, that's Noah Cates. Yeah, it's Noah Noah Cates. No doubt. Absolutely. Uh, So much fun to watch these last few weeks and really just has put on a good show for everybody. And no matter what's happening around him, he's always going to the puck. He's always always around the puck. Always around the puck. He's inspiring for fans. He he Mm -hmm. is. Fans really have noticed the work ethic. They have, and, and it's made me happy, you know, as somebody who's followed him for many years, mm-hmm. uh, you know, even before he got drafted, I think mm-hmm. that it's just really nice to see more and more people appreciate his style of play. Okay, this one is a little bit of a joke, but we had to make this one given our uh, running theme we've had this entire season long. Oh, yeah. But the We Don't Talk About Bruno Award goes to... Ryan Ellis. Hands down. <laughs> yeah. He's been uh, the missing piece all season long, and we don't know much about him. We can't talk about him. Uh, the team doesn't talk about him. He's not in the team picture. <laughs> He's not in the team picture. So, yeah, the We Don't Talk About Bruno Award goes to our four-game defenseman, Ryan Ellis. All right. I have... One more award on my plate, Russ, if you have any, you can speak up as well. But Mm -hmm. on on my list, I have the Gold Star Award. And this is just to somebody who shows up game in, game out, does his best. And I'm not going to like him out there. But at the same time, you know, you just put a little gold star on his helmet and I think he'll be happy, honestly. (laughs) And that goes to Zach McEwen. I like that. As much as, you know, I've given him crap all season long as far as missing the net all the time and and all of that, I think that he does skate hard every single game. He does. And, you know, when that line is out there, I think fans appreciate it. We talked about it early in in the show. Like, there is an appreciation. Maybe put gold glitter in his hair. Maybe. Oh, yeah. I would, you know, or he could be one of those, like, paint themselves gold statues and just be his own award. Yeah, and then we could have the music for Goldfinger behind it. <laughs> I love that. I like it. All right, Russ, do you have any fake yeah, awards I'm gonna, you want to give out? I'm going to say the most active family on Twitter award or low-key active family also goes to the McEwens. I've had, oh, you know, yeah. retweets, follows, all kinds of different things from his family. They're all very invested in what goes on in his career, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Max Wilman's family is very active on Twitter as well. And I would say that uh, Kathy Konechny is one of my favorites. She used to be very active. Yeah. I haven't noticed as much this year, which, uh, you know, I get it. Yeah. But uh, there, there are a lot of good family members who support the flyers uh, around the Internet. And I appreciate that all the time. Me too. And um, any other awards? You know, if we gave Best Flow, Best Flow would go to Wade Allison. Because, like, he's got the most lettuce coming out. He it's doesn't. True. I'm not even sure the last time he's cut his hair. <laughs> I might give it to Owen Tippett because I think he. Okay. It's more uniform. Yes. I think Wade has the natural look. I think he'd be good competition. He's got mm-hmm. more of the natural. Um, I come out of the shower. I don't really care what it looks like look. Yeah, absolutely. Owen does some work on his. You could tell. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. No? I'd want to talk to him about it. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that's a good set of awards we just gave out. Maybe best facial hair. We should finish with that one. Oh, I don't know. I mean, is that also Zach McEwen? I'm thinking it is. Um, just kind of mentally going through the team here. 
I mean, it um, would have been Claude Giroux because I love his grooming is meticulous and gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, but... he used to keep a good beard. Mm -hmm. No, I guess we're going to give it to Zach McEwen, I think. Yeah, look at us giving Zach McEwen awards. Right Just now. loading up on the awards at the end. <laughs> All right. Switching over to our gritty thing of the week. When we talked about the game this week against the Jets, uh, there was somebody in the crowd who was dressed up as gritty. Uh, very impressive. Very impressive. So both the Winnipeg Jets and NBC Sports Philly posted about it. Um, and the fact that the Jets official account posted something about it, I thought was pretty cool as well. And I guess so, he's the Canadian gritty. Maybe gritty can't cross the border. I don't know. Yep. And then there were a couple of really good TikToks the Flyers uh, put together this week with gritty. Um, I think my favorite of the two is the certified sports dork, which was a meme kind of thing that went around TikTok. Okay. And I would say, click with caution. There isn't profanity. It's bleeped out, but... Just in terms of if that's something that concerns you, don't click through on, around certain people. But right. I love it. I think it's really funny. Uh, the other one was Gritty's intermission activities. And just, you know, when Gritty goes out on the ice and messes mm -hmm. with the mites. and Yeah, he's good with that. And throws the Frisbee around a uh, little behind the scenes from the Flyers on what Gritty does when there's a commercial or between periods. See, Gritty will be sad when the season ends because literally what else is he going to do? And, and it gets hot out and he's not he's not dressed right for the summer. No, although Gritty does tend to go to the beach over the summer um, and and participate in the, you know, the camp and activities. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what Gritty has to offer in this off season. I think that'll do it for today's show. Uh, again, last game tonight, but we'll be back on Monday. We still have five shows a week to bring you with so much content heading into the draft lottery and the draft itself. Uh, this weekend, we'll be looking to see if they do the locker room clean out and postseason press conferences with Chuck yep. Fletcher. And um, we'll still have a nemesis on Monday because our bitterness and our, our feelings don't go away just because the Flyers aren't playing <laughs> games. We still have plenty to uh, be upset about and or be uh, angry about. So that's what the nemesis is for. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. Send us in your mailbag questions via Twitter at LockdownFlyers, or you can email us at LockdownFlyers at gmail.com. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. -I I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. You made us your first listen today. Now make your next listen locked on NHL. That's got all the news from around the league, including the latest with the playoffs. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Have a great weekend, everyone.